Farmers of Formula One. It takes a mighty brave or foolhardy owner to pedal a showpiece Porsche at high speed around this Adelaide circuit. But there is no shortage of entrance for the 1995 Porsche Challenge. They're on the grid. Let's join Warwick Rookland and Andrew Voss. Well then, for the Porsche enthusiasts, you're going to like this one. Eight laps of action coming up. Wayne Park from pole position. He's won four of six races here. And a clean start for him, Jeff Morgan. In the multicoloured car off the second row of the grid, slips into third. Anthony Tratt in second, but Wayne Park leads them to centre chicane the first time round. Wayne Park ahead of Anthony Tratt, Jeff Morgan, Ed Aitken. So all cleanly off the start, although the back markers, they're cutting a few corners. Well, certainly it gets a very congested, a little bit further down the grid, and those guys cutting heaps of corners over the kerbs. But uh, out front, Morgan, someone's got their hand up, someone's in trouble. And I think that was John Trevor who went John, off. Trevor John is the man who's left the track, spun out twice in yesterday's race one, and early problems for him. Now, Ed Aiken further back in the field, he's driving the pink Porsche that certainly stands out a mile. They make their way around the corner here. Just on this race, Wayne Park starting from pole position, and I mentioned he's won four out of six. But this race, interesting in that two of the uh, frontline competitors from yesterday, further up on the grid, Anthony Tratt started from two, He's currently running second, and Jeff Morgan uh, from third on the grid, currently running third. They were further back in yesterday's race and made up plenty of ground, so they could be here to put plenty of pressure on this man, Wayne Park, the Queenslander. Anthony Pratt, second. He's our old mate, the plumber, and already a fair sort of gap between third and fourth uh, going back. And a real dice out of the corner, one push wide. That was Peter Fitzgerald. Last year's second race winner got himself in trouble. Now trying to challenge John Smith, car number 12. Now we've got John Smith in Jeff Morgan's other car. This is one of these new 911s just completed the 12 hour. And Fitzgerald is there and Jimmy Richards all over the back of Smith. Taylor knows the three of them there. Peter Fitzgerald, the blue and uh, green car coming in round the Adelaide hairpin. Back to John Smith. Then further back to Jimmy Richards, the Valvoline entry. So quite a dice happening there, although Fitzgerald down the main straight pulls away to get into the chicane. Chris Smith uh, jumped the start, so he'll be having a stop-go penalty. He'll have to come down the pit lane, stop at the end of the pit lane, and then he'll get flagged off again. Jimmy Richards runs very wide there, and he's moved. He's gone back down the field, so he's had a problem. Harry with them getting past him, and the Enersave car we're looking at at the bottom of the screen right now, there's Jimmy Richards. He's a busy boy this weekend in Adelaide. And now in action in the Porsches. He's had plenty of drives. He'll know this circuit all too well wide there just a little bit of the ripple strip up on the left hand side harry with them car number five ahead of jimmy richards the top five seven laps remaining park anthony pratt jeff morgan ed aiken and chris holmes so now they swing down jones straight looking at some of the cars further back and now they get to the fastest point of the circuit grab them straight with the smoke at the back of the line there plenty of smoke as a matter of fact car number nine and that is the entry of, um, of David Withers. Plenty of smoke coming from David Withers, one of the travel plan team. And I don't think uh, if that continues, not blowing too much smoke now, so maybe just um, certain parts. And oh, there's been a bang there, so fr front left wheel, and that's the end of his race. Walter Apple, car number 21. Yep. And he's got a front tyre flat there. He's trying to keep it going but he'll pull out of the race Walter Apple so things are happening in the Porsches the good news as far as the front runners are concerned they're not encountering problems but all the dice is having out the back what about car 25 very striking great to look at here's the dice here watch Walter Apple little touch out he goes wide so what happened there is he's gone down the inside Keane hasn't seen him shut the door and just come straight across his bowels and uh, broken that front left wheel at Martin Wagg's car ahead of Walter Apple. Got things happening now. One interesting thing about this Porsche class is there are so many different variations on the cars, and and the whole category is based on a power to weight ratio. So the heavier the car, the more power you can have. The lighter the car, the less power. And they actually put the cars onto a rolling road dyno, so they measure the amount of output the engines have, correlate that to the weight, and see whether the ratio is right. 
Back now is second and third, and Jeff Morgan's made the move. The multicoloured car, the white, the splashes of blue and yellow, moved ahead of Anthony Tratt. Now in pursuit again of Wayne Park. Little tail happy there, Wayne Park. Got a comfortable gap back to Jeff Morgan. The dice for second and third will be a good one. They were involved yesterday. Anthony Tratt up to the second last lap. Lap seven, he spun out in a tremendous duel and ended up running back in the placings. But now he's applying the pressure, trying to get back into second position. Jeff Morgan and our plumbing friend Anthony Tratt, who we mentioned before, he must be doing great business. This plug, he's unblocked plenty of toilets and drains to be able to race here on the weekend in Adelaide in this very impressive course. Two cars, two with the Toll Express team. Beautifully turned out vehicles. Let's see what he can do right here in the main straight. I've just got news from race control that the travel plan Porsche that was blowing all that smoke, he's got the meatball, meaning that he has to come into the pits because they're thinking that he can be dropping oil onto the circuit. And so I'd say his race will be over. He's got the meatball. He's out. He's got something to take away. He can eat something later tonight. Now, more trouble. That's for him. So we can forget about him. He was further back down the order. But still, he's out on the circuit and they won't like that, they'll get very upset about that because the thing is, if you see that flag, he must come straight in. So, um, you know, he has to become aware of what's going on. Most of these cars, they won't have pit-to-car communication, so they're really going to rely on their pit board signals and the signals from the flaggies and uh, be aware of what's happening from that end. But Jeff Morgan won the Porsche Cup this year in their great battle with track in the Toll Express Porsche. Tratt using up plenty of ground, negotiating that corner. Jeff Morgan, as you mentioned, the Porsche Cup champion this year, the old El Paso car. Wayne Park out in front, as he was yesterday, basically untroubled in yesterday's race. Just a little lock up there. Morgan still involved with Tratt. Further back in fourth is Eddie Aitken in the nice pink number. There's Anthony Tratt. Back to the pits we go. No troubles there locating the damage. And that is the car of Walter Apple. Now, Tratt now starting to apply a lot of pressure to Morgan. Have a go under brakes. Pulls right up behind him. Very close. Morgan wants to really get on, look ahead and get on with trying to pull in. What about it, Warwick? All the time while this duel is happening, Wayne Park is left alone to basically run his own course, get that racing line. And here you've got Tratt trying everything he can. He's the best driver. Now Morgan's starting to drive defensively, tracks all over it. Morgan shut the gate coming out of that last corner. I really thought Morgan could take it to Park with the experience of the last race yesterday. He beat Park in the Porsche Cup Championship this year, but um, Park has seemed to have it on his own all weekend. It's a sizable investment we're looking at too, the car number four here. Reckons he's spent around about $350,000 on this vehicle. Well, this car was originally designed for the IMSA series in the United States. Morgan's brought it out here to Australia. And as you say, a big investment. And also, when you couple that, Scarf's gone off, so he just drives out of the kitty litter. One of their Class B cars. You should mention the three classes too. The Class A's in the Porsches. We've got around about as many as 50 models of Porsches can race in the Porsche Cup. But uh, when you get down to Class C, they're basically your street cars with just a few little tweaks here and there and, of course, the safety uh, additions to the car. But in Class A, they are racing machines and they're the sort of cars we're looking at right now with the likes of Wayne Park, Jeff Morgan and Anthony Pratt. Morgan seems to have just got a little bit of weight now, starting to lap some of the slower cars. So Pratt, once again, starting to apply a lot of pressure to Morgan and this is really helping Park and uh, extending his lead. Coming on to lap six, you're looking at the battle for second and third in the Fortron Porsche Challenge. Race two for the weekend here in Adelaide. And this is a great go. Jeff Morgan in car number four and car 44, Anthony Tratt. Here's the trouble for Scarf. Little left turn up onto the kitty litter. And I'd like to see him in uh, Westfield Shopping Centre doing that. He probably has done it before, just park it in sideways. The gas man, he's got written on the side. No damage done. Back onto the track he comes. So this battle continues between Morgan and Track. You can see Park out in front of the yellow car. No problems there. Now the thing is, can Morgan keep cool under the pressure that Track start to apply? We've only got three laps to go. 
So uh, this is really the battle for the race for second and third. Well, as we said, Trat couldn't quite handle the pressure yesterday when he spun out really going for a red hot go, but now he gets in a different situation. He's the chaser, and every time he's coming to Bradham straight, he's taken it very, very wide. In fact, that's going to help Morgan because Trap lost some time there running wide over the chicane. And uh, that's helped Morgan get away. That was the top five all in Brabham straight. Park ahead of Morgan, further back to Trap. Ed Aitken running in fourth position and Peter Fitzgerald fifth. There's a fair gap between third and fourth and fourth and fifth. Yeah, we, we haven't seen much of Peter Fitzgerald in this race. He was a little bit more competitive yesterday. This is the first time he's run the car. He only ran it for an hour at Malala before arriving at the Grand Prix circuit. But uh, a little bit off the pace this weekend in the brand new course. He is. He won race two last year. First in the opening race last year. So he's a winner here on the circuit. And uh, I'm sure we'll see better things from him in the races ahead. Certainly in 1996. That would be his plans from here. Two laps to go. Trat up on the inside. Loses it. Anthony Trat almost takes the camera out. Sideways as he went into centre chicane. And Ed Aitken gets past Anthony Trat. So that is costly. Third back to fourth. And basically, his challenge to Morgan is gone. Now, Trapp did exactly the same thing yesterday. He was trying to apply the pressure. And, oh, he's lost it again. He's locked up a front. He's, and he's gone off again. So uh, his race plan comes crumbling down. I can assure the viewers, though, he is a very capable player. That's what we do know. There's Wayne Park. This up on the a... ripple strip. Back to Anthony Trapp. Yeah, just had it go and it just went wrong. Yeah, he, he's just trying to close up too much under brakes, had a lose under brakes, Aikens come through, and we've got a yellow flag out here, Aikens lost it and sustained some damage there as well. Plenty of damage for Ed Aitken, now Anthony Tratt gets his own part, uh, back, back past Ed Aitken, and Peter Fitzgerald has snuck through there as well, and Fitzgerald now very close to Anthony Tratt, so he'll have a chance to advance his position another one. Yeah, well Fitz, he's, he's modified his 968 that he ran in the 12 hour production race uh, for two years coming second both times he's converted that to a turbo rs there's only four of these in the world and uh fitz has got the first right hand drive one as i said before this is the first uh run the cars had in anger and uh, he's starting to pick up the pieces this is the queenslander wayne park 32 years of age he's won the Porsche race 91 and 93 and backing up for a double this year 95 his outlay on this car, round about $250,000 on the last lap, Wayne Park. Wayne Park's had a good year, he's driven with Tony Longhurst at the Sandown 500, the 2 is 1000. Didn't have the result they wanted at the 2 is 1000, but this guy's been very quick. He's done a, a full season of Group A before, he drove for the uh, Peter Jackson racing team, teammate to Glenn Seaton in the Port Sierra days. So he's got plenty of experience and uh, certainly been going very well in this class. And still negotiating well, the back markers, Wayne Park. Past another one now, Wayne Park, away he goes. We saw him set a lap record yesterday, not so today, but he'll be happy with that time, 143.65. And that car that he just left, I think that was John Carl Betzer, and uh, I was walking through the pits uh, yesterday, having a look, and John Carl Betzer actually drives this car around the streets of Sydney with a roll cage in it, probably about the only car that does drive on the road and then comes out and races it. It only drives it around, around about third gear in Sydney. Never gets it any further than third. Well, I suppose in one of those third gear is enough to uh, get you locked up anyway. Well, I took a drive around the circuit here and stayed in second. I almost got the third in Bradham straight. I got up around 60 k's an hour. Here's Park. That would have been quite a frightening experience for you, wouldn't it, Andy? Yeah, I had the helmet on back the front. Didn't make it easy. Back we go to Jeff Morgan. That's second right there. It's a clear second now, Jeff Morgan. So the challenge didn't eventuate that we were hoping for. Second to first. But he gave us plenty, the battle for second and third. But Jeff Morgan, a consistent place getter, right back past the four years he's been placed here. Round the Adelaide hairpin will come for Wayne Park. This will be his final turn and into the main straight. Wayne Park, the Queenslander, a double here in Adelaide, almost lost it. That would have been some sort of finish. Wayne Park, he wins the Fortron Force Challenge. Very, very convincing from go to woe, pole position. Jeff Morgan, the second car you can see there, he crosses the line in second position, and the gap is a fair one. Back to Anthony Trapp, who managed to work his way back up to third, ahead of the blue and green car of Peter Fitzgerald.
So not a bad effort from Anthony Pratt. Certainly an eventful race. Now we've got the race here, John Smith in the multicoloured car, but Wayne Park the winner. I mean, you can't say too much else for the ones behind Wayne Park. He's got the machine beneath him, and he certainly performed well. Well, certainly two out of two, you can't do much better than that. He'll be very happy with his weekend. And Wayne Park enjoying his victory lap. Quite apt that it's in car number one. From grid position number one. And he finishes number one in both races. So the Porsches have performed well at the weekend in Adelaide. So the results from the Fortron Porsche Challenge, our second race, an easy win to Wayne Park, second, Jeff Morgan, third, Anthony Tratt, fourth home, Peter Fitzgerald, fifth was Chris Holmes, and sixth, John Smith.